Her name is dying. She has a stage four lung cancer. She doesn't know. The family thinks it's better not to tell her, so you can't say anything. I don't understand. She doesn't have a lot of time left. She should know, right? There's nothing they can do. So everyone decided it's better not to tell her. Why is that better? Chinese people have a saying, when people get cancer, they die. It's not the cancer that kills them, it's the fear. This is Billy. Born in China, she immigrated to the United States at six years old. Ethnically, she is Chinese, but culturally, she is American. I quit. She has a strong, loving bond with her Nainai, who was recently diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. The doctors estimate she has only a few months left. This is her family. They have decided to keep the diagnosis a secret from Nainai so that she may live her remaining days in peace, without worrying of the disease. Billy objects to the family's decision, but it's out of her hands. In order to keep the secret, the family constructs a lie. They stage a fake wedding for Billy's cousin as an excuse to travel to China, paying a farewell visit to Nai Nai. Throughout the film, Billy constantly struggles in finding a balance between her own values and those of her relatives. She's an artist, she lives in New York, and her Mandarin is mediocre at best. Her extended family is homegrown, mainland Chinese. In between them exists a persistent, ever-present gulf of culture. Arriving in China, Billy finds it difficult to put on a brave face for Nai Nai. Finding herself at odds with the decision, it becomes harder and harder to persist in the lie. As a third-generation Chinese-Japanese-American myself, Billy's inability to fit in feels all too relatable. Watching her wade through the often treacherous waters of familial relationships feels like an exercise in examining my own family's history. The farewell is an earnest, real depiction of the so often overlooked challenges of living as an Asian American. It allows a broader audience to gain a glimpse into the world unseen by those who haven't walked in our shoes a glimpse into how it feels to grow up with a foot in two separate worlds. Billy,有些事情你得明白。你们把生命看成是个体的。这正是西方和东方的文化差异问题。通常人是把生命看作是集体的家庭社会你想告诉奶奶的事情是因为怕担责任因为这个责任太大了如果你告诉了她你就没有负担了我们之所以不告诉奶奶的事情就是为了分担她的思想压力Director Lulu Wang has often talked about the difficulty in bringing this film to fruition. Hollywood executives shied away from an all-Chinese cast with subtitled dialogue, while Chinese producers feared that an American main character would make the film unrelatable to Chinese audiences. These challenges echo the ongoing East First West mentality prevalent throughout the film itself. Billy's Western sense of morality values personal freedom and the right to knowledge. Her family's more traditional Chinese sentiment argues that keeping the truth from Nai Nai would best protect her from her illness, allowing them to shoulder the burden in her stead. In this dinner scene, Billy's mom and aunt square off in this ongoing battle of culture. Back and forth, they hurl anecdotes and not-so-subtle jabs. Attempting to prove the value of their life decisions, they use disingenuous examples like the wholesome acceptance of the American spirit versus the notion of quick, easy money in a burgeoning Chinese economy. Passion versus wealth, success versus failure. 
These debates and flippant discussions surrounding life philosophy and financial stability are staples of family conversation. Traditional facets of success are always at the forefront of conversation. No matter what you do, nothing is ever quite good enough. But that's okay. That's to be expected. We have a tendency to forget from time to time, but these family squabbles and petty remarks are always rooted in a place of love. No matter how harshly they may come off, or how lost in the weeds their sentiments may become, family means well, even though they often have trouble properly expressing it. You say you're a stock investment and you're going to make us a lot of money. But I can't expect that from you, right? You are the losing stock. Wang may have written Nai Nai as a representation of her own grandmother, but her on screen temperament and personality reverberate through my memories, reminding me of my own late grandmother, my Popo. Seeing her on screen pulls at my heartstrings. Her mannerisms, her actions, her words. So much of it is like viewing a mirror image of my Popo. She is caring and attentive, but quick to chastise with a sharp tongue. She may speak in harsh words, but they're full of compassion. She plays the role of matriarch, a firm hand and strict orders, but always with the good of family in mind. And she always gives you more and more food, as if you've never quite eaten enough. Her years of experience and success command respect, allowing her to relay wisdom with confidence. She may not always have the kindest advice, but there is undoubtedly a lining of truth. The portrayal of Billy's relationship with her Nai Nai feels like an extension of my own relationship with my Popo. It gives me a chance to finally see a part of my own life and family relationships in a piece of popular media. Something I can point to for other people of different backgrounds to relate to and understand in ways that I've never had the ability to share before. Nene As an Asian American, I often find it difficult to put into words how it feels to grow up split between two cultures, partially because we're taught to keep our heads down, and partially because there is a distinct lack of representation in the media we consume. The Farewell manages to succinctly capture the essence of how it feels to live caught somewhere in this divide. Nai Nai's firm yet compassionate demeanor is reminiscent of my own popo. The blunt, practical conversations between uncles and aunties makes me feel like I'm conversing with my own family. Billy's struggles with differences in language, culture, and ideology resonate deeply within me. The profound sense of representation in this film is not simply due to an all Chinese cast or an Asian American lead nor is it simply about speaking the native language. It's found in the way it accurately portrays the Asian American experience for what it really is. It's about airing out all the unsaid words, the unfelt feelings. 
It's about allowing the audience to gain meaningful perspective and insight of the lives so often forgotten in the margins. Wang's work is masterful in its depiction of these continent and culture-spanning relationships. The petty bickering, the struggles with language, the proud fronts we put on, the emotional outbursts, the veiled compassion, the idea that family comes first. So much is said without being said. The Farewell is a film that transcends the mere boundaries of its story and characters. It's something that I never really realized was missing until I had the chance to experience it for myself. Through Wong's lens, I see pieces of my family, my life, and my story, presented in a way that I've never encountered before. It's an honest, heartfelt, and most importantly, real representation of the Asian American journey that was so desperately missing from popular media's collective consciousness. It expertly captures the feeling of being pulled in opposite directions by culture, history, and heritage. It speaks for those so often overlooked and underrepresented. It finally gives a voice to the unspoken, unheard masses of so many like myself. The story of the Asian American. Ha! Ha! Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. In case I didn't already make it abundantly clear, this movie made a huge impact on me, and it's still hard for me to get through without choking up a bit. I saw this not too long after my own Popo passed away, and in a lot of ways I feel like it gave me some clarity in things that I didn't understand before, and a new perspective and way of looking at things. Undoubtedly, it's a phenomenal film. Lulu Wang's earnest, honest representation of her family and their story shines through so brilliantly. It's incredible the way that she's able to handle such a delicate, personal subject matter, but still make it feel real and profound and not pandering at all. It's a film that just resonates with me on so many levels, and I want anybody and everybody to see it, to gain that kind of perspective and understanding. If you haven't seen the film, please, by all means, find a way to watch it. In any case, Thanks so much for watching, and if you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to see more of my thoughts on things like this in the future. It would really help me out. But that's all I have for now, so I'll see you guys in the next one.